is made possible by the prayers and financial support of viewers just like you. To help us continue with this ministry, please write to Carpenter's Way Ministries, P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. You can also give securely online by visiting www.pastorjefflane.com or call the ministry at 727-222-6162. Welcome to Call to Pray. We'll be live in just a few minutes. But while you wait, we'd like to show you our website. Search up PastorJeffLane.com to your internet browser. Here you can access all daily devotionals that are posted here every day. You can watch the program directly from our website, as well as any other show streamed live from the past. And for Rebecca Lane's wonderful piano music, we made it easy for you to access all of it here on PastorJeffLane.com. To write to Pastor Jeff, state your name, email, and any prayer request or message that you'd like to send. You are also able to write to Pastor Jeff in a stamped envelope to P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. This ministry is supported by people just like you. To keep us on the air spreading God's word, you can click the donate button, select the amount you'd like to give, or any custom amount. Any donation is greatly appreciated. It is also possible to give over the phone at 727-222-6162 and pounding two on your phone after hearing the announcer and you'll be directed to one of our wonderful representatives. every Sunday morning at 11.15 to listen to the Lord's message. We'll see you there. Friends, God is still with us today. God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And God is with us, and God's going to lead us into a promised land, to an er something that He told us, He gave us a long time ago, whether we realize it or not. Praise God Almighty, I'm Pastor Jeff Lane, and this is Call to Pray. If you need prayer tonight, you'll dial that number on your screen, 727-222-6162. When you hear our announcer on the phone, just hit number one on your phone, you'll get through for prayer. Number two, you can get through to our love offering line. And number three, you'll get through to Catherine, our off-the-air prayer warrior. You won't be on TV then. Uh, some people don't want to be, so uh, we make that available. And... Uh, so we're going to get into this word right away. I want to say to everybody, Happy Easter. It, uh, uh, in case I forget before the night's over, I have been known to forget a lot of things. So I hope you all have a wonderful and happy Easter. I hope you get together with your families and uh, have a wonderful meal with them and just celebrate this, this, this wondrous occasion of what Christ did for you and I. It's nice that we sit down at a nice table and eat with everybody and, you know, don't have to go to the cross because of what he did. Anyway, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, and the name of this sermon is The One Who Sees and Hears Me. It's a sad state of affairs, but I have so many people say, I don't think God is listening, I don't think God hears me. Sometimes you feel like you're praying against a brass sky, you know, brass ceiling. It just, just Your prayers just don't seem to go out, they don't seem to go up. Well, that's what the devil would like you to believe. That's what he wants you to believe. And 
he wants you to believe you're all alone in the world. Nobody sees you. Nobody knows your problems. Nobody knows the storm you're going through. And, and he really plays on people's feelings. Uh, but, you know, feelings can lie. Now, how many times can you say that your feelings lied to you? You were mad at somebody and you shouldn't have been. Or, or you were... Uh, uh, you know, you, you were going through something you thought was a problem, found out that it wasn't. Feelings can lie. You can't trust your feelings, friends. Be careful that you judge things through your feelings. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble that way. Trust me. So, Genesis chapter 16. Let's pray. Let's get into this word. Father, we thank you for what we're about to receive, this table you set for our spirits tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray that you nourish these people and feed them through their spirits, their soul, Lord, and yes, even their bodies. Father, have your way. Holy Spirit, come. Speak now to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If there was ever a human being in the Bible that, that, that I find that I, I hurt for, so to speak, um, it's, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Hagar. I started to say Sarah. It's Hagar. And maybe you'll understand why. Because, you know, we, we are born to situations, and life isn't always fair. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many times my children would say, well, life isn't fair. And I said, well, where's it written? Life's going to be fair. Friends, life isn't always fair. But on the other hand, I want you to know that God sometimes, he puts you in situations. He allows you. It's, it's not your doing, it's his doing. Um, and he does that because he's molding you. He's making you. He's the potter. Who are you to say to the potter, hey, you have no hands. You don't know what you're doing here. Um... I know a few times I looked in the mirror and kind of wondered, but I, you know, I got through my doubt real quick. I just trust the Lord that he knew what he was doing. But seriously, friends, it's, uh, you know, sometimes we just have a hard time with our situations in life. You know, I, I, Becky and I have said many a time, I don't know how many times we've had this discussion, we're just a thankful that we were born into to homes where we were introduced to Jesus and met Jesus and and no neither one of us came from a perfect home but to me it's about as perfect as it gets in this world and and uh, it um, but I see so many people born in situations I just was dealing some with somebody last week and uh, it just really hurt me and bothered me that their life was so horrid growing up beyond imagination beyond understanding from drugs sexual immorality uh incest all these crazy things going on and i'm like you know lord they couldn't help that and yet they carried a huge weight of guilt for what they had no control over and and uh, uh they just felt so deserted and so forgotten and left alone Friends, life isn't fair. Things are going to happen to your life, but it's what you make of it. It's what you do with it. I always find it amazing how, you know, all these people go off to war. Some come back and they end up living on the streets, and others come back and they make millions and bi build big corporations. Well, what made the difference? Certainly what in the circumstances. I'm talking about the ones that fought in the same battles, the same wars. It was what we do with what God hands us. It's how we view it. It's how we see it. And we allow, and, and, and we either have self-pity or we can have motivation. And, and we can find the Lord. Anyway, this is what in cases, I, my heart goes out to this woman. I'm sure she didn't, wasn't born and thought, you know, I'm going to be a slave in this life. Let's read. Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Sarah's, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarah, Sarai said. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. And when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Now Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for this wrong I am suffering. I put my slave into your arms and now that she knows that she is pregnant, she despises me. 
May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abraham said. Do with her whatever you think is best. And Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Now, try, just try to imagine this situation. you got a husband and wife. They have a young slave girl, okay? She gives the slave girl, goes to her husband, says, Sleep with her and I'll build my family through her. Now, this slave girl, could you imagine, like, Man, it's bad enough I'm, not gonna, I'm a slave. Now i got to sleep with this old man, too? Seriously, I got to bear a child that won't be my own, but will be, you know, be my mistress's uh, uh, child? I mean, can you imagine the frustration, the anger and everything? But when she became pregnant, she felt like that, that Abram would prefer her. And she's taunting and she's and thinks with Sarai. Now, on the other hand, you listen to Sarai and says, well, this is your fault. Well... She did make the decision to put her slave into her husband's hand. But guys, just because your wife says something don't necessarily mean that she means it. Be careful. It may be a test and you're walking right into a blatant trap. However you want to look at this, I feel like Abram, which is Abraham later on, but Abram should have had a little more wisdom in this. Instead of following the ways of the world... I think he should have said, now wait a minute, Sarai, I love you. I don't want to do this thing. I don't care how you slice it. There was no way this wasn't going to end in disaster. There was no possible way that I see any, any way possible whatsoever. It wasn't going to end in trouble. And Abram should have had sense of, he was old enough by that point in his life, should have had sense enough to think that thing through. You're not dealing with a machine here. You're dealing with a human being and human feelings. So Sarai mistreats Hagar. She treats her very badly. And Hagar flees from her. Now the angel Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. And it was a spring that be beside the road ashore. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm, a, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, and she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant. You will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man, and his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. Now, you know, talk about a prophecy. I mean, to this day, there's hostility between those people and the rest of the world. There's always this thing going on, this, this fighting going on. Uh, I'm sure that Sarai probably still raised him with a lot of unforgiveness. There's probably a lot of bitterness. Uh, Abraham, when he dies, you know, he leaves Ishmael uh, uh, a token a gift or whatever, but basically he gives his inheritance to, of course, um, Isaac. Um, but you could, could you imagine your father doing that to you? I mean, I don't care what their customs were. I don't care what their laws are. You can't get around your feelings in this thing. And here's Sarai is out in the desert. She's probably having a good pity party, you know, and, and feeling bad and wondering, you know, what am I going to do? I'm pregnant. I'm all on my own. I'm in the desert. I got nothing. Uh, uh, I can't go back the way I came. This big mess. And God speaks to her. He sees her. He sees what she's going through. He sees her misery. And verse 13, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, she said. I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well near uh, Bear Lehi Roy, it, it is still there between the Kadesh and uh, Barad. So th this means one who sees, okay? The name of this well, one who sees. God sees her. Friends, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the storm in life you're going through. Uh, uh, we all go through things, and, and life isn't fair, and, and a lot of times you feel like you're all alone, and you're deserted, and everybody forgets you. But friends, look up. God sees you. It's time to open your eyes and see Him. He heard her cries. He heard the boy crying, 
And this isn't the—I mean, this isn't the only time this happens for her. It happens another time too. And you may think you're very insignificant. I mean, can you imagine her when she? I'm only a slave. I'm a nothing. And now I'm in trouble because I've not only my slave, I've left my master. They were marked as slaves. She would be known as a runaway slave, which would make things even worse for her. She feels like she's less than nothing. You know, I don't know if you uh, uh, watched or seen the movie, but you really should read read about it and know about it. Harriet... Uh, I'm trying to think of how you say her last name. Tudman or... Do you remember... Do you know how to say her last name, Todd? Who? Harriet... Is it Tudman? Tubman. Tubman. Okay. She felt like a nothing for a long time. And, and she was beaten and she was mistreated and probably sexually abused. I think that was a pretty definite... Uh, thing Almost all of them black women were back then as slaves. Now, I shouldn't say all of them, but, uh, uh, but um, a, a whole lot of them were, okay? Horror stories. Can you imagine? Not only are they black, but they're a black woman who is a slave. I mean, they felt like less than nothing. They were a chattel. They were property. And this woman, God saw her. She spoke to God, and God spoke to her. And she risked her life again and again, freeing other slaves, bringing them out of their bondage. She had the courage to trust God, to see God, and to pray to God. Even though she had been taught that she was to obey her master no matter what, and Scripture was perverted and taken out of context to keep these people pushed down and made them feel like lower than dirt. Now, when you look at that, that's the way this woman feels. She's been sexually abused. I don't care what the customs were. That's sexually abused. She didn't ask to be a mother. She was told she would be a mother. And God sees her. And he blesses her. And he watches over her and takes care of her and her son. What a God we serve. Because God sees those that nobody else does. And if you feel like you're one of the people that God never sees, friends, I got news for you. God sees you. You are precious in His sight. You are important to Him. Important enough that He speaks to you. He spoke to her very plainly. I don't know if there's really any place where, where you see where God spoke to Sarai in quite this manner. The only time I can remember where he speaks to Sarai, or Sarah, however you want to, uh, uh, depending on what part of her life, when he spoke to her, he kind of was rebuking her. Remember the woman at the well Jesus went to? Is not God the same yesterday, today, and forever? I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 10. I'm sorry, that was Genesis 16, 1 through 14, if you didn't catch it. We're now in Daniel chapter 10. Now in the third year, Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. How would you like to be called that? In its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Now at that time, Daniel mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat, no or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing at the banks of the great river Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, wearing a belt of fine gold with um, up has around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face was like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like gleamed in burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was only the one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone gazing at this great vision, and I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I was listening listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees, and he said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed. 
Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Now I want to stop there. I want you to just, just picture Daniel. Daniel was taken from his country. He was supposed to be an heir to the throne, a prince to the throne of Israel. He was in the line. I don't know how close in line he was. I just know that he was in the line. He was royalty. He was stripped of his position. He watched as they burned his city, tore down the walls, tore down the temple, hauled them away as slaves off to, to Babylon. They were diminished and demeaned in every possible way. They took away his name, they took away his identity, and they took away his masculinity. And he was made to serve the king. He was nothing but a slave. He could not have children. He was never to marry. And here he is in this position. And God says, Daniel, you are highly esteemed. Why? Because in spite of all Daniel went through, he kept his eye on the Lord and he did exactly what God did, said. He said. God told him to serve the Babylonians as you're serving him, and he, he did. He served these kings while he was in this position. Now God is speaking to him. Now friends, you could have a rebellious spirit. You could decide not to, to, to do that. You do whatever you want. But Daniel decided that he was going to do exactly what God told him to do. Listen, there is a time that you serve, and there's also a time to rebel. We're not going to get into that right now. Let's continue, verse 12. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. I want you to underline this in your Bibles, highlight them, or whatever, but please. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Now that was three weeks ago. But I want you to see that God heard him the first moment he spoke. Sometimes, friend, we feel like God doesn't hear. Sometimes we feel like, that, that, like I said, our prayers are hitting a brass ceiling. Sometimes we feel like that, that, that God is not listening or he don't care. And we come to all kinds of conclusions because we don't get an answer. We feel like he's ignoring us. But it says from the first moment he spoke, the first moment... God heard him. And he sent an angel in response to this. Now listen. The prince of Persia kingdom resisted me 21 days. Now the prince of Persia was a demonic spirit that was over the kingdom of Persia. Okay? Every kingdom, every nation on the earth, every people have a demonic Force, a demonic spirit. There is a hierarchy in the forces uh, and in the armies of Satan, just like there is in the armies of God, and just like there is in the armies on, on the earth. What you see in the physical realm, friend, is the same thing you're going to see in the spiritual realm. We mimic those things. They don't mimic us. We mimic them. So here we have this high demonic force, the Prince of Persia. I do not believe it was Satan. I believe it was one of his, his lackeys, one of his top demons. And he's fighting, he's stopping this angel from getting through to Daniel with the answer. He don't want him to get through because why? Daniel is a threat to the kingdom of Satan. He's a threat to the things of Satan and, and he knows, Satan knows that he's got to stop you from praying. And the best way for him to stop you from praying is to get you thinking that God isn't listening or you get you angry with God or upset with God or, or whatever. He is doing everything in his power to keep your answer from getting through. It says, Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerning a time yet to come. Now who is Michael? Michael is a powerful archangel. He's one of the, and he's also the angel of what? The country of Israel. 
Honey, you don't want to mess with Michael. He just attacked the prince of Persia with no problem and put him in his place. You don't mess with Michael, and Michael is still over Israel. Now, was I was saying this, I'm sorry, while he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face towards the ground and was speechless. The one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to one standing beside me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord. I feel very weak. How can your servant talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Now, who do you think looks like a man? Let's see. Who calls himself the Son of Man? That would be Jesus. Do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed, he said. Peace. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong now. Be strong. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, do you not know why I have come to you? Soon I will return and fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one, who's, no one supports me against them except for Michael, your prince. Now, I'd love to get into all of that, but we're not going to get into all that because I want to back up here and I want you to see something. What does it say? He tells us, Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. You see, Daniel, the answer was sent the first day he prayed. The first moment he prayed, God sent an answer. Satan tried to thwart that, tried to distract uh, uh, Daniel, tried to distract the messenger, did everything in his power to stop him from breaking through. Because he wants Daniel to know what's going on. Why? Because Daniel's a prayer warrior, friends. Everything that happens on this earth has to come through people praying. Now we see the prince of Persia, but there's, listen, a house divided against itself can't stand. But there's also a prince of Greece, a demonic force over Greece. And the demon over Greece will come and fight against the demon over Persia and he will overcome him and defeat him. And one day the Romans will the Greeks. Demons do not get along. They crave power. They fight among themselves. They hate. Listen, you can't compartmentalize hate. If you got hate in your life, you're going to hate everything around you. You're going to eventually hate anyone that's with you. I had talked to somebody one time. They were getting married to somebody. And this person was a very bitter, unforgiving person. And I warned them. I says, be careful. If you marry this person, one day that will be unleashed on you. You can't hold it back. It's like yeast. It'll go all through their life. You can't put, compartmentalize it. You can't put it in a compartment and say, well, I have reserved this hate just for them. That's like these, these people who are uh, up in, in New York and they're fighting Trump. And they told them, oh, you don't, the rest of you businesses don't have to worry. We're just after Trump. Yeah, right. I wouldn't start a business up there in my life, depending on, I don't care if you like Trump or not. You don't go after one person. The law is a law, and if he's wrong, then you go after him and anybody else is wrong. But you don't use the law for your own uh, 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 gain. And that's exactly the way demons are. They hate each other, they fight each other, they try to destroy each other. There's just enough of unity among them to be a thorn in our side. And that's why Satan is always trying to cause disunity in the body of Christ. So they wanted to stop Daniel from praying. But I want you to understand, there was a reason that Daniel got the answer. Because he stood his ground. He kept praying. He did not cease. He did not stop. He kept praying until he got the answer. Because he knew his God, he knew that God would answer him and come to him. And give him what he was looking for. You see, you may think you're a big nothing. And maybe the world will tell you you're a big nothing. You're insignificant. You're not worth anything. But honey, some of the strongest prayer words I've known in my life would be little old ladies who seemed like they were women of inconse they had they were inconsequential. 
But in God's eyes, they were mighty warriors. They were giant slayers. They, they brought down demons. They tore down and they uprooted. Because they were releasing the will of God and they learned how to stand their ground because through living through circumstances in life, they became strong. They did not like circumstances make them weak, but they made them strong. They kept the right attitude in their walk with God. Attitude is so important in your walk with God, people. Now go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, and I want to just talk about this just a little bit. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord, people. You cannot stand against demonic forces in and of yourself, but you can stand in the Lord. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Listen, the devil is always scheming and trying to come up with ways to kill you and to destroy you. I'm living proof. I, sometimes I think he stays up at night in overtime, at least his, his demons in, in overtime trying to come up with a new way to kill me. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You see, too many of you right now, you're struggling with, with cancer, you're struggling with, with, with physical issues and all that and and the problem is is you got your eyes upon the physical your struggle is not with the physical your struggle is not with cancer your struggle my friends is not with diabetes your struggle is not with arthritis your struggle is not with with tumors or or heart disease your struggle is not with any of these things your struggle is with demons it's with principalities and spiritual forces look what it says or for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. But against rulers and against authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. How can you do that? Put on the full armor of what? Of God. Not the full armor of Jeffrey. Not the full armor. You don't go out and you don't buy uh, 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 M50, uh, what, what it is, uh, uh, AK-47s and, and, and rifles and guns and grenades and, and, and uh, sniper rifles and tanks and planes and everything. If that worked, then why are our enemies pouring across our borders? If that worked, why did we leave $85 billion worth of weapons over in Afghanistan? Because it don't work. You see, if you want to fight Satan on his plane in flesh and blood, you're going to lose, baby. Just telling you, you're going to lose. You need to be able to stand your ground against Satan. And the only way you can stand against Satan is putting on the armor of God. God has given you armor. God has given you things so that you can stand against the devil so the devil don't have a chance. Stand firm then with the belt of truth. Buckle around your waist. Friends, you got to keep, you got to have truth. You don't got truth, you don't have a chance. With the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's one that I find kind of interesting. It says, you know, you're to, you're to, to, to fit your feet or shod your feet with the readiness that comes to the gospel of peace. What did David do when he saw the giant? You know, Israel needed peace. What did he do? Did you ever think about it? He ran. Friends, a man of peace will run to the battle. He'll run to the fray to bring peace to it. He knows in whom he believes, and he knows he's got on the armor of God. And why did David overcome? He tried to put on the armor of, of, of Saul, and he told Saul, I can't go in these. I'm not used to them. I got to go in the armor of God. That's what I'm used to. It may not look like much to you. And he didn't fight the, the, the Philistine with a sword. He fought him with a rock, a stone. 
The rock of the word, Jesus Christ. And pray. That's what this is mainly about. Because I want you to know God hears you. We're talking about prayer here, honey. And pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray. On all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Friends, there are all kinds of prayers. You need to pray constantly. Pray in the Spirit. Listen. There are times when I pray out loud. But when I'm going through my day... I pray. I pray going down the halls of the hospital. I pray when I'm at my uh, outside. I pray all the time. I find myself praying in the spirit. Because you never know when the enemy will attack. I still... I, I talk about listen it was such a miracle I had that heart condition did not know I had that heart condition was praying about it uh, I mean just praying all the time but wasn't praying about a heart condition but God just had me praying in tongues and that and everything it was a few times I said you know I don't think something's quite right when men don't feel quite right uh, matter of fact I had somebody brought that up to me a couple you know said a, a couple occasions they says you know you, you were telling me that you didn't feel quite right but God knew. And God took care of it. Friends, God knows where Satan is. Satan comes in and he sneaks up behind you. He comes in and, and attacks you any way he can. And the only way you're going to stand to get it and steam is having on the full armor of God. Because if you don't pray with the full armor of God, you're a fool. Because I'm going to tell you something, he will come to destroy you. Now Paul says something, it says, With this in mind be alert, and always keep praying for all of the Lord's people. Always be alert in prayer. Like I said, you don't know when the Satan's going to show up. Pray also for me that whenever I speak words, they may be given me, so that I will, whenever I speak, words will be given me, so that I will be fearless, make known to the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in these chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Now, did it seem fair that Paul was in chains? I mean, God could have freed him, let him loose. God, to But God told him before he got there he would be there. And why did God put him in that situation? And why did God put you in situations? Friend, you've got to keep your right attitude. Trust God because he put you in those situations so that you can see his glory and that others may see his glory. Look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24. What the wicked dread will overtake them. What the righteous desire will be granted. When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. When the storm in your life comes, friend, God will grant your requests. God will grant you victory. But you must stand firm. And you must stand firm, and you can stand firm forever. But the wicked will be wiped out. Look at Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 1. I, I think I said that wrong. I, yeah, 7 1. I don't know what happened. I don't have it on there. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, king Rezin of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, marched up against Jerusalem. They could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken as trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. And when the Lord said to Isaiah, go out, and they had conquered all the other cities of Judah, okay? When the Lord said to Israel, go out, you and your sons, uh, Sherub, Jeshub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the Lauterman's field, say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Now, you always wonder where those cups that, that they have that says, you know, keep calm and carry on. Actually, that came from England, you know, but I, I think they got it from here. Keep calm, friends. Just keep calm. Know that your Lord is with you. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of reason and Aram and of the son of Remaliah. Aram, Ephraim, and Remaliah's son have plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart, divide it among ourselves, and make the sons of Tibi... Uh, Tibi I'm sorry, Tabil, king over it, 
Yet this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is reason. Just flesh and blood. Within 70 or 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. And they were. And the head of Ephraim in Samaria. And the head of Samaria is only Remaliah's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. What did, did Daniel do? He stood firm for 21 days. And he got the victory. What did we just read in Ephesians? When you've done all, put on the full armor of God and to stand, and when you've done all else, you'll be able to stand because you'll stand firm in your faith. You will not be moved. And if you don't, friends, you will not be able to stand at all. Look at Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and not give up. Friends, once you give up, you lost. You give up, you lost. It's over. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the, the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I do not fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and uh, attack me. <laughs> eventually come and attack me. The Lord said, he's afraid of a widow. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge said. And will not God bring about justice for those of his chosen ones who cry, cry out to him, how often? Day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Huh. What is he talking about faith being? I, I, I know the brother that started this, and I disagree with him 100%, and I respect him fully. But, I've heard people say, well, you pray once, and anything else is not faith. You pray once, and, you, and, and that's it. You let it go. You don't pray again. That's not what this says. Matter of fact, what is it called faith? Basically, what they're calling faith here is not just believing, but believing because you never give up, because you keep praying, and you stand firm, and you won't let go of God until you get your answer. Jacob would not let go of God until he got his answer. He refused to let go. He says, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God not only blessed him, but God blessed and gave him his family and everyone else. Friends, stand firm in your faith. Don't let go. God sees you and he heard you the first time. But you keep praying and you don't let go because you're in a spiritual battle. And if you give up before the answer comes, friends, the problem is it ain't what the devil did, it's what you did. You gave up. God says stand firm to the end. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready, cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Now, he, God is speaking to him and he says, hey, be strong and courageous. Don't give up. Now, I think this is interesting because it talks about the sea and the river, you know, and they had that phrase over there in the Middle East, from the river to the sea. They want the Jews to wiped out from the, or to, from the river to the sea. They, they, they chant that phrase. We've even had a congresswoman who was recently chastised for, for using that phrase because it means to annihilate, to wipe out. Friends, you ain't going to wipe out the Jews because they don't give up. They have the spirit of Jacob in them. They are the Israel of God. They don't give up. You will be worn out. 
by them, no matter how few of them there are, they are not going to give up. They are not going to quit. They ceased to be a nation for almost 2,000 years, and yet now they're a nation. It's hard to beat somebody that don't give up. Learn from them. And what does God say to, to Joshua? Now, don't go telling God, well, I lost my grandmother, I lost my grandfather, I lost all my prayer warriors, everybody in my family. Well, so did Joshua. But he said, Joshua, now I'm with you. God is with you. Listen. Come, come closer, listen. He says to him, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. You want the inheritance of God? You better be strong and courageous. That implies there's going to be a battle. Nobody said you wouldn't have to fight for it. God says if you fight for it, you will have it. You will overcome. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will prosper and be successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go to in to take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you uh, giving you for your own. When you get into prayer, you need to be strong and courageous. Don't give up. Press the battle. Press the fight. Stand firm in your faith or you won't stand at all. Everybody wants an instant miracle. When I was young in the Lord, when I was very young, the first great miracle that God gave me, I think, I, let me see, what was I? It was when I cut my eye. I'm trying to think. I think I was around 12 years old. And the next year, as sixth grade, seventh grade was the next year. Uh, uh, no, it was eighth grade. Se seventh grade was the first time I had a miracle with my eyes. Eighth grade was the second. But later on, I would, would uh, uh, have a roofing nail go through my eye. And it didn't get healed instantly like the first times. And, and I had a talk with God. I says, why? He says, son, I'm teaching you faith. It's not always going to be instant. You got to learn. Faith is not it, it, it is far more dimensional than you can understand. It's not the believing that I exist. It's not just believing that I exist and I can do all things. It's believing that I exist, that I can do all things, and that I'll do it for you. But it is also believing no matter what time and circumstance dictates to you. I'm teaching you to be strong in your faith and trust me no matter what. I realized how much faith I had when somebody said to me, well, maybe this guy, time God isn't going to heal your eye. And I got angry. I says, oh, yes, he will heal my eye. God isn't a liar. I know what he told me. He told me I'd have my eyesight, and I would always have my eyesight. And God did indeed heal me. He healed me. He set me free. He made that blind eye see. And, it, friends... When you learn that, when you understand that, it was in that moment I realized just how much faith I actually had. Because in that moment I realized that nobody was going to take it from me. It was what God had given to me. Friends, when you know God's will, when you know that you know, you can stand strong in your faith because you realize that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he's not a liar. You can be strong and courageous and when everybody else says, just give up. Can you imagine? Just, just reason with me a moment. Can you imagine how uh, uh, Moses must have felt? He's, he's on the way to the promised land and, 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 I mean, on the way to talk to Israel and everything. And God almost kills him because he didn't obey him. His wife was against him, and and I'm not talking about the. Um, hold on, I got confused. 
I'm, I'm thinking of Job, not a, uh, a Moses. Job lost everything. He still had his wife. His wife said, why don't you just curse God and be done with it? And Job looked at her and says, you're a foolish woman. We're not to accept the good as well as the bad from God. I came to this world naked and naked I'll leave. But I will not turn my back on God. It ain't about things, woman. It's about my relationship with Him. He will vindicate me. He will restore. I know that's paraphrased, but that's basically what He told her. Friends, when you know the character of God, you're not moved by time, you're not moved by circumstances. You trust Him no matter what. You can stand firm in your faith. Be strong and courageous. What has God promised you? Well, first, you have the written promises. Secondly, you have those individual promises. God has given me individual promises and He just keeps fulfilling them and keeping them and fulfilling them and fulfilling them. He showed me how to get married. He showed me who I would marry. He showed me that I would have children. I have seen my children, I have seen my grandchildren, and I dare say I will see my great-grandchildren someday. Because He promised me that. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Trust Him. Pray through. Don't let go. Don't give up. Because God heard you the first time. God sees you. Now it's time for you to look up and see the God that sees you. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. And as we pray and we seek you, Lord. Some people, Lord, they're so foolish. They call in and they think that's the end of the matter. Well, I didn't instantly get healed. There is no power here. Lord, open their eyes and let them see. If they have true faith, Lord, they never give up. They'll stand firm in their faith and they'll be strong and courageous in the face of pain, in the face of the storm, no matter what happens, Lord. Because they know, Lord, your character. They know who you are and that you are able, Father, to overcome. And that, Lord, you're the God that blesses us and gives us life more abundantly. Lord, increase their faith tonight, I pray. And put a bulldog tenacity to grab a hold like, like Jacob, Father. Make them the Israel of God where they grab a hold and they don't let go until they get the blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. Okay, I'm going to start praying for people. We're going to take a little break. Todd's getting it ready. Make sure you're listening on the phone. Because when I come back, I'm going to hit the ground running praying for people. Uh, make sure your phone is not on speaker. Take it off speaker because it distorts. Also, I want to say that during this time, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, and, and last week we had a wonderful week financially. It was just amazing what God had done and what you folks have done. I want to thank you so much. This week, there are many of you, um, you've never given to the ministry. I'm asking you to consider I'm asking you to consider giving tonight and, and, and do something. Don't just hear the word. Does it Do what it says. But if you haven't given to the ministry, you haven't done it in a long time, I pray, I just ask that you would consider and that you some of you would come through and do it. Help us to continue to preach the word. The pure, unadulterated word of God. I will preach what God gives me to preach. It ain't always popular. It isn't always what you want to hear. But it is what you need to hear. I don't like to sit down at the table and eat everything on the table, but it's what I need. Remember my mama used to say, you need to eat that. Why do I need to eat that? Because it's good for you. I hated liver and onions. But I was anemic. And the doctor says he needs to eat liver. Well, I didn't like it, but it's what I needed. Glad he didn't tell her pea soup. Anyway, I'll be back in just a few moments. Go ahead, Todd.
This program is made possible by the prayers and financial support of viewers just like you. To help us continue with this ministry, please write to Carpenter's Way Ministries, P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. You can also give securely online by visiting www.pastorjefflane.com or call the ministry at 727-222-6162. Okay, I, I, I you gotta stay humble here. L listen, I leave it tonight. My wife tells me, you know, I need to pick up some milk. So I go by and I pick it up. And I bring it in the refrigerator and I tell them, I says, now you remind me you not to forget that milk. So they made me a sign. Okay, remember your milk. That's just too funny. So it's in the uh, we got a little bitty refrigerator in the back. It's in there. So. Last caller, you have to remind me to, to get my milk, all right? Anyway, hopefully I won't. Listen, I don't just walk on water when I'm not here. I, I have to, buy, you know, get groceries and take care of the lawn and other things, too. And the only water I've walked on has been frozen, by the way. Let's go to Pam in California. Hi, Pam. Hi. How you doing, sister? Fine, and you? Doing good. How can I pray with you tonight? I want to. I want. I want to pray for my family. For who? My family. My family. Okay. My brother and his wife. All right. They all healthy and doing good. Yes. Okay. Well, let's pray for them. Father, I just pray that your will be done in her family and her brother and her in his wife's life, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you would protect them, watch over them, Lord, as well as Pam. Lead and guide them, Father, and that they would all know you, Father, and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you for it. Amen. Hey, God bless Pastor, you, Pam. Yeah. Can I talk to you? I think you are. Go I ahead. know. <laughs> um, what are you going to do for Easter? What am I going to what? What are you doing for Easter? Oh, I'll get together with my family and we'll probably roast a ham or cook a ham or something or something like that and, and uh, have a big dinner. And then we're going to go outside and we hide Easter eggs for all the kitties and they go looking for them and we keep hiding them and they keep looking and we keep hiding and they keep looking until we can't take them anymore. And uh, we have a good time. That's good. That's what I mean to you. Well, That's good. what I mean to you. God bless you, Pam. And, and I, would like, I would like to meet you. Well, you got to come to Florida. I can't seem to get out to California. <laughs> All right, Pam, I got a lot of people waiting for prayer. I got to run, okay? Okay, yeah. All right, Doc. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Right. Let's go to Yvette in Alabama. Hi, Yvette. Yvette? Yvette. All right, who was the next caller? I couldn't, you, you, block. All right, Yvette, don't hang up. We'll come back to you. Uh, let's go to John in California. Hello, John. Hi, Pastor. How you doing? I'm there. Yeah, how can I pray with you, brother? I need the ho Holy Spirit to get a hold of Elon, Elon Musk, the billionaire Tesla, to pay me my $1.2 billion that he said he'll pay me. He told me that he'll come to my address and pay me cash, and I'm waiting for it. Are you sure he said this? Yes. Yeah, he told me uh, Wednesday 
Uh, wood. Okay, Joe. Uh, it's a, it's an investment fund. Okay. Well, let's pray, John. Father, I just pray that your will be done. And Lord, if this is this man is on the up and up, and that he said this, Father, then I ask that he would fulfill his word, and that he would bless, Lord, these Indian nations with this. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Have your way. Amen. God bless you, John. God bless you. All right. Bye-bye. Let's go to... Be Maybe I should have prayed that he come by and drop us off one point something million billion. Let's go to, to to Becky in Kentucky. Hello, Becky. Yeah. How are you? Not too good. What's going on, Becky? Uh, something I want to say for us. Okay. So, uh, I sent the money in. Five dollars for the program. Uh huh. And ten dollars for the teacher. It take a plus size t shirt for me. You you sent ten dollars for a t shirt? Yeah. I don't sell t shirts, Becky. That's a whole different outfit that does the t shirts. So you're gonna have to contact them. Now when we get that I can send you back your ten dollars, but i I'm not the one that handles that. Okay? You have tags on T V. Becky did. Yeah, and she also yeah. told you that that was through another website, and, and I can uh, try to find that for you, and, and you can contact them, okay? Okay. I'm sorry, but I don't have anything to do with that, and I refuse to get involved with it. When oh, dopey. When that, let me see if I can find it. Give me just a moment. I think I have it in my phone here. I ain't got no computer. Well... I don't know what else to tell you. That's okay. It's okay. It's, I, I it's go ahead and take uh, it anyway. What? Let's put it on. Let's put it on the program for it's next year. Go ahead, put it on the program. Okay. Well, you're you're on the program. How can I pray for you? Okay. Put out fifteen dollars on that program then. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to pray for you or not? Yeah. What are we going to pray about? Head to toe. Okay. Oh, body. Father, I lift up Becky tonight, Lord. And I just pray in Jesus' name you'd pour out your spirit upon her, Lord. May your, your Holy Ghost anointing, your, your holy healing oil, Father, be poured out on her from the top of her head. May it flow down her all the way to her toes, Lord, and restore her body. Make her whole by the stripes and by the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Becky. I'm looking. Yeah, this is my program here. Pardon? Uh, yeah. All right. You have a nice night, Becky. Happy all right, let's go to Brittany in Illinois. Brittany, are you there? Yeah. How can I pray for you, Brittany? Um. Well, I I called because well, I actually called yesterday about my stomach. Uh huh. Um. I guess I just want prayer. Um. Sorry, I'm hearing my echo in the background. <laughs> I know. I know some people have a lot of trouble with that, and they call in, and, and we don't know why it does that. But I, um, so, so what would yeah, you like so, to pray about? Yeah, I've been like, like nauseous, like on and off for like the last two days, and okay. um. So you're still having the the stomach problem? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, I lift okay. up Brittany, and in Jesus' name, I speak to that stomach, and I command it to be at peace, for the nausea to go away, and for her stomach to be restored. Whatever this is causing this, we command that to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching her. 
In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, sister. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go to Sheridan in Ohio. Sheridan. Sheridan, are you there? Yes, I am. This pa- yep. Is this Pastor Jeff? Yes, it is. How can I pray for you? Well, I'm calling for my son, Walt. He's having a bad time with his feet. He had him operated on. I'd called in earlier, but he had to go through an operation, and it's not turning out good. Okay. And he's pretty disgusted, and I pray that God maybe will undertake and seize your prayers and okay. healing. And okay. What's, r- what's wrong with his feet? I don't know for sure what it is. He's having trouble, and he had him operated on. Now he's really having trouble. Yeah. And I hope and he's really disgusted. And I know this thing's very serious. Okay. Let's pray, brother. Father, okay. I lift up Walt tonight, and Lord, you are the God that washes our feet. I ask, Father, that you would pour out your blessings upon this man's feet. We command his feet to be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. May he be able to walk, Lord. May he be able to run, dance, Lord, wherever he wants on these feet. But I ask for a complete and total restoration to make them whole, Lord. We trust in you now, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus. God Amen. bless you. Been a while well, since you called in, hasn't it? Well, yeah. I, I called in before about my son Walt some time back. Yeah. And uh, he just seemed like it got worse for some reason. I don't know what it is. And this thing's turning in real serious. I mean, it is something that's. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain it, I but might... pray to God that this will, he'll get the help he needs. Yeah. I'm going to tell you I, something, I Sheridan. You. I've learned a long time ago, oftentimes when I pray about things, it, it's like the devil just attacks me worse, and it gets worse before it gets better. Uh, I never give up. I can't afford to give up. It's the only life I know. I'm 90, most 91 years old. I've come too far. <laughs> yeah, well, at 91, you know what it means not to give up, don't you? Oh, I try. That's the best I can do. And I yeah. put my faith in the Lord through your ministry. I, I turned you on some years ago. and mm-hmm. I've been listen, trying to listen to you. I fall asleep a lot. <laughs> Yeah. I, I appreciate your ministry, Eric, and I thank you for following the Lord's will. And well, thank you, sir. It meant something to me. I know you've been with me a long time, and I appreciate it. Well, I thank you again for your prayers. Thank you very, very much. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Terry in Minnesota. Hello, Terry. Terry? Hi, Pastor Jeff. Hi. You're having a rough week, aren't you? Well, I'm a little kind of drugged up a little here. Yeah. Are you still at the hospital? Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. be here for a couple, three more days. Your kidney's doing any better? Well, that's right. I called you. I really need help with uh, the warfare stuff mm-hmm. to get these images of what it I see things people don't. Yeah. But them. But you prayed last night for my kidneys. Mm hmm. And t- this morning they were treating me and treating me, and then they took a blood test a couple hours ago. And the doctor came up and he said that the, um, the numbers are climbing back to normal, and he doesn't understand how it. That's happening. Mm-hmm. You understand, don't you? Yeah, I do. Because God used you to pray for me. Sister, it's because Jesus did it for you. Yeah, that's what Terry, I meant. Terry, if you listen, I don't know if you got to hear the sermon tonight, and I understand you're at the hospital and what you're going through, but I just want to say what I preached on is the God who sees you and hears you. 
Terry, God sees yeah. you and He hears you. Maybe you don't think you're significant, but God sees you as very significant. You're very important to Him. He I loves you dearly. So. Because I know... What? I, 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 I know. I just know that He's probably teaching me a lesson. Really? And you you think knows. God did this to you, Terry? No, 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 no. I, I, mean, I think he I, is teaching a lesson. I think he's teaching you how he heals you and he loves you so much. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. saying about the spiritual yeah. warfare. Yeah. Because it, it, I haven't been... I've seen things today that I didn't want to mm -hmm. see, but I, I haven't been, like, scratched. Yeah. Oh, and I really want the house prayed for. Because yeah. before I left the house and came here, yeah. I I said anything in here uh, demonic or evil, get out in the name of Jesus. From mm -hmm. Christ from Nazareth and get out. And I said, God bless this house. And I shut the door and I left. Oh, if this was Terry, good. let's pray, okay? I'm sorry, I'm kind of... I understand. <laughs> Father, I, I lift up Terry tonight, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you have locked, Lord, all of these evil visions and things that she's seeing, Father. I just ask that she'd see you. I ask that during the night you'd give her songs in the night that are from heaven, Father. Your songs, Lord. Your word, your peace. Let her see how much you love her, appreciate her, Lord. And Lord, we just speak a full and total recovery in her kidneys. And that, Father, she'd go home a changed woman, totally healed. But Lord, through this, may her faith increase and may she go home, Lord, and be strong and courageous, Father. And understand to put on the full armor of God so that she can stand her ground against the devil's schemes. In all that she does, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God Amen. bless you, Terry. I've been asking for the armor, so. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm but glad to hear that. I just, all yeah. right. I'm sure you'll be home by Monday. Yeah. God bless. So. Bye -bye. God bless you, too. Thank you. Let's go to Everett in... Um, Alabama, uh, or Yvette, I guess it is, in Alabama. Yeah. Yvette, are you there? Uh-huh. How can I pray for you? Okay, I want you to pray about my finances, that uh, that this insurance policy to be released. And so I they haven't released it at all, huh? No, we haven't been in court or nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Uh -uh. I just can't. I, you know, I know, I, I don't believe your husband was in his right mind there at the end, but I just can't imagine a man doing that to to his wife. It just it just really bothers me. You remember when you told me, I told you that he didn't believe in Jesus no more. Do you remember me and you talking about all that? That he didn't believe in what? Jesus. Mm-hmm. I remember. Uh huh, and then I told him that he needed to repent, but he seemed to thought he was blind. So. Well, let's pray, Yvette. Father, I lift up Yvette tonight, and I ask that you give her a favor with that insurance company, Lord. With anybody involved in this, and Lord, that money would be released to her so she can take care of her expenses and her bills. That's one of the things that a husband must do in his lifetime to provide for his family, his spouse, to make sure they're taken care of, Lord, after he is gone. Now, Father, you're the father to this widow, the husband to this widow. I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that, Lord... You would make sure that she's provided for. And you would do fill in, Lord, where her husband has failed her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Yvette.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Friends, I just want to say something. You know, there's a lot of things in life that we, we need to do. But one thing you should do as a husband, you should make sure that if anything happens to you that your wife is taken care of. She took care of you and took care of your children all their, her life. It's time, you, you just make sure they're taken care of. That's one of the things that, that, that I think God honors. Another thing you should make sure, you know, before you go, your children are standing out. Our job is to raise our children that they can stand on their own two feet and they be able to make it in life. I have to say that I'm very proud of my children and, and, and their spouses. They all have made their way in life and, and uh, uh, they left home early. They didn't, you know, they didn't stick around for years and years and years. They went out and they worked hard. They did what they had to do and, and they, are, they are all a blessing to society. That's our job, man. You need to make sure that they, they can and, and uh, they do. I just think it's a, just a God-given responsibility to all of us. So train up your children. Let's go to Donna in Florida. Donna, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How can I pray for you, uh, Donna? Hi. Um, my husband just got out of the hospital again with pneumonia. And this, but even worse than all of that, is that he's suffering with trigeminal neuralgia with making any kind of recovery really difficult. Okay, what was that he's suffering with? Trigeminal neuralgia. And what is that? That is nerve pain in the face. It's pain where? In the face. That sounds Because horrible. in the brain, it's horrible. It's like shock. It's like electrical shocks running up your um, thumb. Mm -hmm. My gosh. And it's, this is hard. It's hurting my face. Um, like I've been doing the prayer and fasting from church. Yeah, we're doing the 21 day fast with my church. Uh huh. And um, it, my face is really, it's hurting my face a lot because I just don't understand how God can allow this type of suffering. When I keep crying out for help. So well, that's your assumption there is God caused it. No, I, I'm not saying God caused it, but I am asking God to heal him and to free him of this pain. Mm -hmm. And it just hurts because I just feel, I just don't feel God's presence. Well, sister, it's just like I preach tonight. There is a battle going on. It's spiritual warfare, and Satan's trying to block it any way he can. And we mm -hmm. have to understand that there is a battle going on. You know, wars aren't won. They're not won in one battle, usually. And they're not won overnight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they take some time. And I've gone through some things in my life. That, hey, I wish it would have ended quicker. But I'll tell you what, it made me a stronger believer than ever. It increased mm -hmm. my faith instead of, of, of diminishing it. And I went through severe neck pain for like 17 years. I'm telling you, it was getting to the point. I would mm -hmm. I don't know if I could have done the program that I do here now because I don't think I could have sat here this long. Mm -hmm. And uh, even Catherine can tell you about the pain. Yeah. She's been around me that long. But I can tell you, he always heals. Don't ever give up. And don't ever um, question the goodness of God. God will do it if you just let Him, if you trust Him. As far as God's concerned, it's finished. I know how you feel. I'm not diminishing your feelings. But feelings can lie to you. Like they did me. Yeah. Stand firm um, in your faith. I'm just having horrible anxiety. Physically, I'm having anxiety. Yeah. Well, let's pray. Father, I lift up Donna, and I pray, Father, tonight you would increase her faith. 
I rebuke that demonic spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. We command that to go. I speak your peace over her. Lord, I pray that you help her to pray through and you give her that peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray over him and I ask for a complete and full recovery soon. In the name of Jesus, this thing would go, that it would be gone, and that the pneumonia would be gone, Father, and that, Father, his lungs would be completely whole and healed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray you touch, you intervene. But help her to stand firm in her faith, Lord, no matter what. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Donna, I don't know how many times in my life I've had just absolutely impossible situations. I don't know how many times I've heard there's no cure for that, or there's nothing we can do, or they're just going to die, or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically what we I was told. And, and Donna, I never gave up when they told me, even in the last minutes of my daughter dying, and they told me that she'd be dead in a few minutes. I didn't give up. I right. didn't accept it. I'll never accept it. And God healed. Yeah. Donna, D- trust the Lord no matter what. Just, just hang on and pray through. And you don't stop praying until you have that peace. It'll come over you. That, that It's a peace. I call it the peace that surpasses all understanding. It goes right. beyond what everything that you understand, you see, and what you've been told. And it, I know yeah, they, how you feel. I, would, I know what it was like to watch my yeah. children at times suffer. I know it because you want to take their place. You want to do it for me. Like, God, I know I can have faith to get out of this. But it's through those things that, that I grew and got to know God in a deeper and more wonderful way. And it made me tougher, stronger, and, and, and not give up. I was... Yeah, he was basically told to get, you know, for hospice to come in, and he told him no. Yeah, and well, I'm proud of you. I had a yeah. fellow that, that they sent to hospice from the nursing home, and we just kept praying, and he went. He went. They sent him off to die. They thought he'd be dead within 30 days. Uh-huh. Praise God Almighty, he's living on his own now. Oh. Right. You have a great night, sister. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Let, let's go to Vicki in Kentucky. Hello, Vicki. Vicki? Yeah. How can I pray for you, uh, sister? Uh, I've got a question, too, and I want to pray. Okay. I, uh, can you ask your intercessors to pray for me? I've, I'm in extreme pain. This uh, cancer, scoliosis, uh, osteoporosis, and grown to- It's everything. And, uh, but my back is hurting me. Something horrible. Well, I could ask uh, them, but you just did, and I'm sh- they, they're praying for you already. So let's pray, Vicky. Okay. Then can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Okay, I'm so having these uh, attacks in my mind. From, I guess from a demon. Cussing God out every time I try to pray, and I constantly. Ask God to forgive me. Every time I pray, this is going on. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand the full armor of God. I hear preachers say put on the full armor, but nobody ever really explains it in detail. What is the full armor? Well, I have, and you probably didn't see that thing, but maybe I can do that again, okay? Yeah. Vicki, do you, have you forgiven everybody? Are you holding any odd against somebody? No, I've, uh, I've asked all the time for... Did I forgive people? All right. Well, what you're talking about is a demon. So let's pray. Father, I pray over Vicki tonight, and I speak to the demon that is controlling her mouth, Lord. I command that demon to go and to come out of her in Jesus' name. I command that demon of infirmity to come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone. Be gone. You'll curse my God no more through her mouth. I command you to be silent and be gone in Jesus' name. 
And Lord, I command the pain to be gone in the name of Jesus. We just speak relief into her, Lord. And Lord, I ask that these diseases would fall before like dominoes, Father. She'd be set free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I also pray that you would begin to reveal to her your word and increase this woman's faith by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, I, uh, Go ahead. Uh, I pray for the Holy Spirit that other night. And I just wonder if I'm still saved, but I pray for the Holy Spirit to come into my life with that other woman on a show. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said I was filled. But I don't know, you know. Yeah. Well, Vicki, now that you told me, I'll keep praying for you. All right. Have you okay. have you been has has God given you the gift of tongues? Well, I've read in a, a lot of these books that it says if you ask and believe, he'll he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. okay. That you don't have to wait for years or whatever. I'll be praying. Is that for true, Vicky? Is, is that true about that? I don't think that everybody gets it instantly. No, I know many people that have it. I know people that prayed for years before they got it. Yeah. Well, you think I should keep praying? Absolutely. You're to tarry. It means to, to it, it's like glue. You glue yourself to that request. You don't let go until you get it. I mean, to the Holy Spirit. That's what I just said. You keep okay. tearing until you get it. Okay. Well, how will I know them? Because I started well, talking about it last night. Vicky, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told another lady. I told her she'd know. She kept saying she had it. I says, no, you'll know. I'll never forget when she called me. She says, you were right. I did. I got it. I, God started speaking a heavenly prayer language to her. She says, I got it. I got it just like you said I would. She says, I know now. You'll know. God bless okay. you, Vicki. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, just I'm going off the air, but if you guys will hang on, I'll pray for you off the, the air. But I just want to say, if I'll be on Sunday morning, you can watch us at PastorJeffLane.com. You can go to YouTube, Roku, uh, I don't know where all, uh, Facebook, uh, Call to Pray. But if you go to PastorJeffLane.com, you got to hit Carpenter's Way Church. Uh, 10 o'clock, we'll have Sunday school. And at 11.15, I'll be preaching, okay? So please join us. All right. God bless you all. I love you dearly. Please be a blessing to the ministry tonight. Good night. Happy Easter. This program right, is made we'll possible to... by the prayers and financial support of viewers just like you. To help us continue with this ministry, please write to Carpenter's Way Ministries, P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. You can also give securely online by visiting www.pastorjefflane.com or call the ministry at 727-222-6162.